What's up guys? Let's talk about the G9 Mark II. Yeah. Yeah, I had to I had to delete my prior video. It was a little too negative. So this isn't going to be the most positive video. This is just on basically on how Panasonic is is messing up again with their marketing department. So, let's separate this out. We have the business department, marketing department, and the engineering department of Panasonic. Engineering department and everything doing great. Marketing department, business department sucks. Like literally they just don't get YouTube. They don't get marketing. And so let's start at the, the base of it. When you think of G9, Panasonic, what, what kind of photography do you think of? Like what comes to mind? Outdoor, wildlife, right? Okay. Wildlife photography. Coming out with a new camera. I subscribe to over a hundred wildlife channel guys. Guys that go out and do photography with their camera and wildlife. How many of those guys have Panasonic cameras, G9s? One. And he does a video like every six months. Okay. Not a big, not a big acceptance. How do we change that? Well, yesterday woke up, they gave the G9 Mark II to a bunch of generic or general camera reviewers. So they're gonna spend like all this time and this much time on the wildlife component. Now, I did a review in 2021, 2020 on the G9 camera review for wildlife, specifically for wildlife. Now, not a lot of people watched it, 8,000 people, but 95% of those guys were wildlife guys. The thing is, when I first bought that camera back in 2017, blown away at all the things that were not mentioned in the generic reviews, like DB review, they do good reviews. I'm not banging on them. They can't spend that much time. But if you're looking for wildlife photography, you got to break it down even a little bit more detailed. So these, these generic guys like the camera store and DP review and Gordon Lang, I like their camera reviews. I see through it, but most people, when they look at a review, they're going to see this huge thing and get swallowed up with all these details. They're going to compare this against like the R7, the R9, or the R10. And you know what they're going to say. Like the, G, the GH6 review is like, well, it's a good camera. It's kind of a half step forward like Chris and Jordan. But I kind of feel time has moved on. And, you know, if you have micro four thirds, you might want to buy it. But I could just totally, you know where this is going. If you got a G9, the G9, G9 Mark II will be kind of a, a good, good step. But if you got some other cameras, it's really hard to ignore. So they're painting a review in the spectrum of huge, like against everything. So an individual that's going to 90% of the time do wildlife photography, he's going to look at that review and say, wow, maybe I should just get an R10. Maybe I should get an R7. It kind of does everything a little better, you know, 32 megapixels. But they, he won't realize 90% of the time he's going to be either ice cold conditions, maybe dirt, sand, the things Panasonic does great at. It's not going to get highlighted. And so this is the crazy part of Panasonic. They're putting it out in a generic, lazy view. They don't understand the group, the market, or how YouTube works all together. They just fleeced it out, throw it out to everybody and, and see what sticks. And this is what Canon and Nikon and Sony love. They want that one-to-one -one generic matchup because they're going to know they're going to win it every time. Yeah. So this is the deal. Let's back up. Sony 10, 15 years ago was nothing in the camera market. How does a camera, a, a toy manufacturer, a, you know, Walkman manufacturer create cameras and become the number one seller against companies that have been around for like a hundred years? You got to do some disruptive technology. 15 years ago, I had a, a Sony in my hand looking at it. I was blown away at the, the tech inside the camera. It's like, whoa, this thing is cool. A lot of the established guys said, oh, don't, don't, don't do Sony. Don't do Sony. They're, they're, it, you want the big two or three, Olympus, Nikon, Canon. You don't want these guys. All right. It wasn't until mirrorless really started gaining that they started putting in all the extra bells and whistles, but it still wasn't enough for Sony to grab this top spot. They were in position, but then they started going to YouTube. 
He started embracing a lot of these camera guys with cameras, like, hey, create some camera. So they got the young guys that didn't, weren't influenced as much, didn't have that heritage behind them in the camera industry, and like, create some videos. So they went from 2,000 to 4,000, 20,000, 200,000, 2 million subscribers. These kids, their content got better, their presentation got better, and they sold tons of Sony cameras. Nikon and Canon just went with the old, well, we're in the NFL, it's, it's posted way over here, right? It's posted, that's the way we do it. We don't mess with small YouTube stuff. We don't have to do that. We control the market. Very arrogant. And look what happens. 2017, 18, they lose the market for the top spot. And mirrorless takes off, right? So it's, it's kind of the same thing. Just lackadaisical marketing by Panasonic. They have a group of people that are really interested in their tech, but they just don't want to market it any different. Now, the marketing game on YouTube has changed. Everybody's doing reviews now, tons of people. And so the same tactics that worked for Sony five, ten years ago doesn't really work now because Canon and Nikon are doing the same. But what's working now is getting cameras in the hands of wildlife photographers or portrait photographers, whatever you do, and showing that it works. So there's a guy back in 2017, the very first wildlife photographer that I seen that really kind of jumped out. He probably has the most views on YouTube. His name's Morton Hilmer, Nikon guy. Five years, he did videos, top rank videos, bird photography, you name it. And at the time, he was considered moving over to Canon because people asked him, like, Nikon was really hurting. They didn't have a mirrorless camera. They were, they were in the red. People were thinking they're going to go out of business. And he's looking at their, their autofocus system. People were lending them Canon equipment. He's like, whoa, this is better. And he was impressed. He was about ready to leave. And I was thinking to myself, Nikon, you are absolutely crazy for letting this guy leave. Like, give him an ambassadorship. You look at Nikon's people, like their ambassadors, I don't even know, like three-fourths of these guys, I don't even know what they do. And this guy's got 33 million views, all at 20-minute videos. You can't buy advertisement like that, and they don't even know who he is or give him the light of day. It wasn't until 2022 that all of a sudden they lent him the Z9. The Z9 was a prototype, and they gave it to him. They said, he can't show it yet. Go to an island, market this. They finally started getting off their butt in the last few years, and they've done really well. They understand YouTube now. Panasonic, not so much. So here's the deal. How bad is Panasonic really hurting in the micro four-thirds space? I played with the GH6 about six months ago. Decent camera, okay? They took out some options for photography that I really wanted there, and it was $2,200. People asked, Hey, they can come out with G9 Mark II? Had no idea. As if I had some kind of special information that they didn't, right? Didn't know. Gave up. Just gave up on the Panasonics. Just like, okay, don't know if you're going to make another one. You come out with another one, and you don't put it in the hands of the people that want to help you, you know? So the market share, GH6, has only six reviews at Adorama. If you want to check out the acceptance of gear, just count how many reviews they have. Amazon, Adorama, B&H, you'll know. $2,200, it was, GH6 was marketed, now down to like 16 or 18, 1680. Six reviews. The R7 has hundreds of reviews. R10, these cameras are selling, not the Panasonics. And that's the thing. They're going to be upset with their results. I just don't see this working out unless they seriously change course with their marketing. Yeah. So will there be a G, G9 Mark III? I would be very surprised. At $1,800, this camera, I've looked at the specs very close to the GH6. I've played with it. It's a good camera. I don't think they're going to be able to make it work unless they get it in the hands of these wildlife photographers, cut deals with them, say create 10 or 20 videos, just keep the gear, make it happen. 
because here's one of the secrets that you guys don't know. This stuff costs a lot of money. You know that part, but you don't understand the, the production cost of a really bad wildlife video. My first prairie chicken video was probably cost 500 bucks. You know, by the time you drive there, spent 80 hours of cut time, 100, 100 cut scenes or 100 cuts, um, moldable things. It, it's very time consuming, but that's the best way to kind of sell your gear. Get them in front of your gear, watch what people do, look at the photos they take, and you're like, it's inspiring. It doesn't inspire. These video reviews, these reviews of these cameras doesn't inspire because there's so many of them. Like, well, I don't know if he's paid. I don't know. Well, like, he's going to do it and he's just going to go on to the next one. It doesn't make people feel attached to your product. So Panasonic, you're going to have to do something different. If you guys got questions, comments, write it down below. Hit that subscribe and I'll see you next week.